I offer to model for art classes, not for the 10.50 an hour the poster promises, and not because I have delusions of seductive lines or flawless skin. But I'm told they cannot use me as a model, told it would just be too shocking. I hang up the campus phone, glare at an ad in the day's paper, pink ribbon keychains, 1050 plus shipping. You know, you get the diagnosis and you, your world crashes and everything changes and then you go through everything that you have to go through and everything changes and then everything's done and everything changes. Nothing is ever the same again. I don't know how you could go through that process and not be a different person. We're not set up for that expectation. We're not set up for the long haul. We get to be born, we're going to die, but in between I have to live. Maya Angelou said, there is no greater agony than bearing a story inside you. So you're just gonna keep writing, right? I yearned to be among women who understood this. So I thought, what's mightier than the pen? When I was going through um, treatment for stage three breast cancer, um, I got stellar medical care, but something was really missing. Um, and I realized that what was missing was real talk. So faced with stage four pancreatic cancer, I was given a journal, a beautiful journal, and this pen from one of my clients, and I've not made a single entry. Maybe subconsciously I've been waiting to get through all this so I can write about what it was like but then what if I don't get through it? So I better start writing. <laughs> when I walked in that room, it was the first time where I was surrounded by women who got it and who were ready to just sit with the pain or sit with the joy or sit with the feelings, the everything. And I just loved the idea of sharing this experience with other women just to kind of learn and, and share stories and learn from other people's wisdom and insights. <laughs> yeah. So we bring to this not only the specific diagnosis that we have, but also the history of our own lives and maybe the lives of those who came before us. And I took that first bunch of breaths and, she, and, and, and I thought to myself, wow, this is the first time that my shoulders are in the right place. Here's a tool that is yours always. It's portable, you can write anywhere, and it reflects back, and you can put down the burdens you had. I'm actually gonna start out some questions that you don't need to think about. It's almost like you're filling out a form. Why, why would I do that? I want you to recognize that this is more just the act of writing. I remember seeing the list of workshops that I was assigned to and going, huh, okay. <laughs> We're gonna go through a little writing exercise about how journaling's really good for us and how it's great to be intentional. <laughs> One, your last name. Two, place of birth, city or place of birth. I'm gonna say a word and I want you to just write what comes to mind after I say that word, arrow. Keep on moving that pen. You can write anything you want to. You don't have to share these, it can be very private. I remember almost feeling like something was being pulled out of me. Curtain, C-U-R-T-A-I-N. Okay, curtains, window, you know, but what do you do with those curtains? You pull them back, and when you pull them back, you reveal something. The last of this exercise, I am, I am, keep on writing. I am a mom, wife, daughter, sister, friend, brave, warrior, scared, confused, frustrated, fun. I'm scared, lonely, tired, beautiful inside and out. Why do I question its truth and dignity? Why can't I believe it? We go around the room and share. I am willing to embrace the change and become something new. Take note of myself. I am not shy. I will be writing down words that the participants said just in a different order. I am treasured by God, fragile, 
at peace, wanting sisters. When she pieced all of our words together, everybody felt it as if she wrote one story for me. These are your words. I didn't add anything. Moving to a goal, the arrow through my heart is piercing, so I block out the world. But it's showtime. Or is it the end of an act? Is it a body of water that drops down awash with emotion? I say, what the hell is that? I was born in Rochester, New York General Hospital. I was born to falling water. I am stronger than I think I am. I wrote amazing twice. I wrote amazing <laughs> twice. I am a gift. Those are your words, your words, your poem. Because I was in that room with people that had stories, I could finally let myself be. I could scream in capital letters. So it's like, you know, when you can't say me to react now, so when you can't say it, you can write it out in capital letters. Just knowing that you're not the only one that has those, those thoughts or those feelings kind of makes you feel like it's, it's okay. The hour spent, the connection with the other women was deep. Being able to pull the words out and put them on paper was powerful. It gave me something to do with all the thoughts in my head. What I want to talk about is the healing room. A place to hide. A tree house. Small bed of branches where you can see the weather coming. Before you know it, you are high above the fray. You are purposeful, patient. Like a hand-stitched quilt. To get there, focus on the beauty. Keep open enough that maybe someday you will remember being asked what you wanted. So I invited you to bring in an object, something that you've had a long time. We offered sessions that were multi-session. I'm gonna ask you some questions. And those were able to build up some momentum. The first question is, I think I chose this because... And I have, a, have this sort of, I don't know, underlying women's burden that you don't burden other people with your illness. You just keep doing. And so I had some idea that I was just going to keep doing. What is this not? So this is not. By the time I went to the workshop, I'd sort of forgotten how to do anything besides cope. I brought a music box that was given to me by my college boyfriend 50 years ago. This is not a mere gift of compunction. It is not an object frozen in time. When I write, I find that, that I find the core, the distillate of what I value. Feels like a hug of caring and of a time and place and person where myself was recognized and acknowledged in a gentle way. Often took a turn to bring you back around to what does everything boil down to? Sometimes all the chaos is swirling around you and you um, just have a moment to see what kind of sifts out. Two air plants and decorative holders. One is from E, the other G. Why did they choose these? They do blend into my new house with all its reminders of living things. That's it, I think. They carry the message of survival. Wow. So I was in a raw, difficult place, and I was supposed to be jumping for joy because I was done with treatment but there was something stuck. It's been set in my lap and I have to figure out what to do with it. No cancer, but how do I unpack it? I sit staring at this metaphorical bundle wrapped in a red and white plaid cloth. If 
felt really good to be surrounded by women who quote unquote get it. I used to walk around carefree and untouchable and now I've been touched very deeply. It's so true. It's, you are in a thin place forever. I forever. Think. Yeah. Listening to their words made a total difference. But, you know, I also think to myself, I have my husband and my daughter that I need to, to, to do this for. They brought me to an understanding of what I needed to do for myself, to understand where I was in this whole morass that is cancer. I remember my parents being upset with me when I stopped wearing a bra, <laughs> stopped shaving. I would be shunned, I would be used, I would not be taken seriously. I remember that I was testing what it meant to be serious, which often made me cry. I also knew it had something more to do with discovering and rediscovering what it meant and what it means to be a woman. Every time someone would read what they had written, you were like, whoa. And most of the time, even though it was so personal and, and um, very directed towards them, I could relate. But it gives life that flavor. And it has helped me use writing as a tool for self-care. Well, I thought we'd do the fun exercise now. And this is an example of it. Each person would write one line and then pass that line to the next person who would then add to that line and fold the paper over and then pass it on. So you just see what the previous person, and we cannot peek, I know, as tempting as we want to. <laughs> the, the way it was, it was conducted really inspires healthy connections in a person's brain, I think. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to believe that we were all there for the purpose of relating to our, our illnesses. Love me tender is what Elvis said, but the way he moved and seemed to love were more I robust. I felt invisible today and maybe tomorrow too. How to harness this feeling when I walk out into a harrowing world. Maybe I can I want to walk through and get my toes wet. I want to run through and get my everything wet. Because if I don't, then it will be like it never happened at all. <laughs> Wait. Oh my God, it's real, it's real, that just happened. Being in those sessions was, it, you know, it depended on the day. Some days it was very, very healing and we laughed. <laughs> and some days it was a struggle to sit through the whole thing because of the pain in the room. But I also realized that sitting with pain is part of life and it's, it's a huge part of healing. Who is this woman? Who is this woman? Grasp hands with the sisterhood of females who have passed into the next realm. Who share this world now. Who have not yet materialized. Me sharing how I hurt. I felt that I could say that probably for the first time out loud all-consuming joy, searing pain, divine offspring, societal guilt. Everybody has something to say, and everybody has something inside that deserves to come out if they're ready for it to come out. Sisterly solidarity, overwhelming beauty. We own it all, and we wear the scars to prove it. It made me understand a lot more about, about, about my own death. I am so much more at peace with myself. We hold each other up, pull each other out, and push each other through. It's loving kindness when you pray for others that are going through things. Loving kindness. You know, it lightens your load, so. Anyway, this has been great for me.